we're going to be discussing how to make money with digital ads. Seems rather straightforward, right? You know, it's the whole reason why we sell ads is to try to make money. However, the purpose in the, and I would say the, the use of ads for most of our partners is varied. Some look to use it to be a revenue generator. Others will use it to offset some of the other marketing efforts that they're doing. And for some partners, it's simply a kind of in the back pocket, I would say, or, or one more tool on their belt, as it were, so that if their clients are looking at an ad campaign, well, no problem. Uh, you have a best in breed, I would say, ad division here, um, ready to manage any and all campaigns uh, that you might uh, be willing to pass to us. So we'll be discussing a little bit of that today. My name is Mike. Um, I guess I'm a product growth expert now, but truthfully, you know, I'm basically sales enablement for ads. So I'm any and all things advertisements. Uh, many of you in the chat, I can see we've already spoken uh, in the past. There's a lot of new names in the chat as well, um, or in the participant list, I should say. Uh, so it's a pleasure to meet you virtually. Uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to have some time in the future to chat. However, if anyone on the call uh, or on today's uh, session wants to get into contact with me, best ways to do it, there's my email address. I'll be listing this at the end of the lecture as well. And then finally, my Calendly meeting link. Like I live and die off that calendar. So if you want to push me a meeting, talk any and all things ad strategy, rollout, you want to talk about onboarding, you want to talk about just some spitballing, uh, more than happy to do that with our partners. Gives me great job security. So by all means, push meetings as needed. All right, everyone, let's get right to it. Why sell digital ads, right? You know, what's the purpose? Why are we doing it? To what ends? Well, if we're going real macro, I would say on digital ads, we know by 2020, all ad dollars spent globally, 50 cents of each dollar, if not more, are going to be spent on a digital medium. That means those million dollar, the years of the million dollar Super Bowl commercial, while they're still around, make no mistake, we're doubling that in the digital sphere. More often than not, digital ads is usually the product that a lot of our partners will use to get that foot in the door. Oh, you want a managed, say, social campaign. No problem. Oh, you'd like to be found at the top of your local search so that when people are looking for your product or service, they're going to be able to contact you and uh, procure whatever service that may be. Or maybe it's the case that you simply want to have digital ads to almost open up your product offering a little bit more to be uh, I wouldn't say future-proof because it's always changing, of course, but to simply add more value to your clients' campaigns because not only, and we'll get in this, not only is digital ads a valuable way to be able to attribute, track, and report on actual revenue-generating actions for your clients' businesses, but moreover than that, it affords you a wealth of knowledge on how your audience interacts with your ads or your messaging, what messaging they interact with and what they don't, also, what time of day, what device, what general demographic, uh, say, makeup those audiences are comprised of. So it's the insights, uh, part and parcel separate, of course, than that ROI that also adds value with the digital ad campaign. It was very difficult for me back in my print days to be able to say, hey, this print ad did really well with uh, baseball enthusiasts 45 years and older. Well, I couldn't really say that. What I could say is we had X many circulation and the, you know, X many people saw your ad. With digital ads though, we can dive into the, the granular details of those audiences. So is it men 45 to 55 on Thursdays and Wednesdays between the hours of seven and eight o'clock at night on their iPhone seven or earlier models that are the best converting audiences for you? Does that mean you're gonna change maybe your overall marketing mix now, knowing what you know about your primary, secondary or tertiary audience? So make no mistake, it's not just that little ROI calculation on the bottom. It's not just being found in that search page. Digital ads is also a way to be able to create a smarter marketing mix moving forward because everything we do is very much so data driven. Pros and cons of digital ads, as we kind of alluded to, gets those clients in the door, right? Best way to, you know, I always say digital ads is a drone strike. It's not a carpet bomb. We're basically looking at that precise or, you know, less militant, I guess, analogy would be it's the scalpel, not the hammer. What I'm trying to do is get really boil down to that perfect audience. The ones that have shown based on all the data we're collecting are the most susceptible to your message. So it's that target audience. It's that granular detail. Who do I want? What do they look like? How do they interact with my ads? And I'm going to follow those actions of those users to get you the best possible bang for your buck. And of course, it's that nice high ROI. 
So the, you know, I would never promise uh, a positive ROI because we really don't have much control over the offer or call to action if you've ever seen some of those older uh, webinars of ours. However, our average ROI right now is about five or 600 actually and 36, 36, 40% is the average ROI based on the client's uh, retail spend with our partners or everyone on the line today. So it's a really great way to be able to attribute and to quantify all those actions that lead to a sale. And I build that into each of your reports for you, no problem. Cons of digital ads are of course that it requires sometimes a deeper level of technical knowledge. So setting up things like the Google Analytics property, making sure that our goals are tied to a revenue figure and that revenue is then fed back into the report so I can attribute that revenue to the ads we're serving. So some of that technical knowledge, not only in the reporting, but also in the platforms. So while Google AdWords Express and Facebook have made it easier for people to advertise, in a lot of cases, it takes that special knowledge to know that, hey, FYI, just so you guys know, Facebook's opening up some more of its demographic targeting. Or maybe it's the fact that people aren't aware that Google My Business now has a free get a quote button that's available for any service-based business, a uh, free lead generator tool, right? Um, not a lot of people maybe know that by adding location extension onto your Google search ads, you now have the ability to potentially be shown in the map listings for Google. So at the top of those maps that you'd be seeing on your mobile device. Finally, maybe it's that voice search now displays paid ads in, uh, you know, in the first query it gives back. So to my Google Home, if I'm looking for a pet food supply store, it might be that that location in that business that my iHome gives back to me is a actually paid ad. So these are the kind of things that partners look to us for, to have that technical knowledge, to always be abreast to the most recent changes in these networks, make sure we're keeping those uh, in mind when we're building campaigns, and also trying to look at the horizon of where these ads are going to be going, where these networks are taking us. Because make no mistake, they're testing out a, a bunch of different features. We like to make sure our partners have the first kick when it comes to any new feature or service that any of these large networks provide. So it's keeping up to speed on those technical knowledge. It takes time to set up campaigns, of course, right? You know, if you don't have a graphic design team, website team building landing pages and hosting them, say uh, a coding team to be able to get dynamic call codes, custom event goals set up in the reporting. Maybe it's just simply a uh, Facebook blueprint expert uh, or maybe our search experts setting up your campaigns, doing all the keyword research. Like it's a lot of work, make no mistake. You can save yourself a buck doing it yourself, no doubt. But sometimes, you know, in the long run of that campaign, does it make more sense to have a campaign that's set up by, I would say, technical specialists and managed every day by not only software, but also our team of coordinators. And then finally, you need to provide reports and you need to be able to tell a story. Really, I think the fact of the matter is everyone, it's, it's quite easy to give a client a report at the end of the month. I don't feel it takes very much sales ability or really doesn't offer a lot of guidance to our uh, or your clients, uh, you know, our clients as well, technically, um, to simply drop a report off and be a service rep. You know, the service reps are interchangeable. Someone coming to your door every month giving you a report, you know, you could find probably a few people to do that for you. What is difficult is finding a local marketing expert that understands or has a team that understands the space, can provide you a lovely looking ROI centric report showing you that your ad dollars were used to actively generate a return for your business by your own admission and then finally be able to tell the story of what is the larger impact of this? So what is the implication of this metric moving up or down? Or what do we notice with this ad creative getting better engagement versus the other? What's the wider, what's the more far ranging implications of some of those insights? It's being able to provide value in not only that report, but also the insights that you bring as a marketing expert that makes you intangible that, you know, sadly to Google and Facebook, uh, you know, chagrin, a machine will never be able to take over that human aspect of advice, of guidance, of counseling and business, uh, I would say acumen. And that's certainly something that we try to emphasize with our partners. So why choose Vendasta? A lot of the reasons we just went over, right? Scale, a lot of uh, partners, you know, especially technical partners, for them, it's not about not having the expertise. It's listen, I don't want to deal with these 20 other clients that I just got this month because I brought one franchise on and I'm getting every other location. No problem. I'll always tell partners, hey, we're like a cargo ship. You give me a standard style campaign. I'll take 10, I'll take 10,000. You're not going to pay any more overhead in the form of hiring new employees. You're not going to pay 
um, any more dollars for those services, you're paying the same management fee on only the campaigns you activate with us. So luckily for you, you take 10 orders, you take 10,000, no problem. Of course, that labor like we discussed as well as the expertise certainly layers into that. It's having what we estimate to be, or estimate to be about six to eight roles. You're effectively kind of foregoing by having the ads run through our team. Graphic design team, website team, uh, you know, dev team building our tracking codes, Facebook search, display, video experts, and then the slew of coordinators that are gonna manage your campaigns every day. As well as a couple thousand dollars of software that I would love to not pay for, but uh, I would say it's definitely needed in the optimization, bot fraud prevention, a uh, bunch of different tools kind of behind the curtain that a lot of clients don't see. Of course, it's that specialization across ad services. Let me rip through these here because I'm way over time still. Of course, improve retention and to bring in new customers. So if you've been on calls with me in the past, you've heard my uh, thoughts on advertising. I like to structure ad campaigns like a casino. So what I mean by that is I like to stack the deck. I want to make sure, hey, you're looking to sell a car. Well, if I know average MSRP on a vehicle sale of 33,000 last year in the States, if you can tell me how often you close inbound calls, physical visits, appointments booked online, people downloading pricing sheets, maybe people applying for internal financing, well, right there, I have four or five different ways I can accomplish that client's goals. Meaning that that's a very risk adverse campaign, meaning we're gonna probably see the return of that business month over month over month meaning a very safe line base revenue for our partners. You get that margin every month. You have a very safe campaign that's delivering value across five different points that we're tracking. And then lastly, it allows you to build a case study or a little bit of, I would say, confidence than in going and selling other clients similar to that uh, first one we had started with. So my big goal is always retention. You know, there's things I won't promise to partners and I realize they want like a cost per lead or they want a certain amount of calls. I'm trying to kind of drill that out of people's, you know, talk track, because really we don't have any, uh, I would say, uh, we don't have any control over the offer, that call to action and urgency. Those are the things that are going to generate that uh, conversion number that everyone's interested in. If I don't have access to it, I don't want to promise you a certain return because it's a little outside of my control. We found this is the smartest way to afford, uh, afford us the best long-term success of a campaign. So I'd strongly encourage us to stop thinking in the terms of, qualify, you know, a certain amount of leads or how much do I have to spend to get this many calls? Let's start thinking of all of the different ways we can chart value so that we're telling our partners or we're selling rather these ad campaigns in the safest possible way. And what we found is that means that we have 80% retention month over month by trying to sell in this fashion. So just some food for thought. If that interests you, we have a couple webinars I'll chat with at the end of the lecture today on how you can find some more information on that. Of course, team of advertising strategists, again, Facebook, uh, you know, certified team, search, display, um, Google Premier Partner, of course. So recently, uh, we were awarded Google's Premier status, meaning that we're doing a scale of business with Google these days uh, that's large enough to afford us an enterprise rep, weekly consult, or, uh, you know, I'd say weekly, monthly consultation calls, figuring out what's coming down the pipes, what should we be aware of. Uh, it's kind of nice to have a little bug in Google's ear every now and again. Of course, the know-how and certifications, you know, I don't want to bore us with just technical, you know, hey, check out this cool badge we have. But ultimately, we have over 20 years of ad experience, digital ad experience uh, in the ads team. Um, you know, so a lot of expertise built there. And then finally, we have some proprietary tech that maybe you might have heard of already, a uh, product called Local Ads. Can touch a little bit about that a little later on, but it's some very, very cool tech uh, that we can talk about. Of course, with our advertising campaigns, in what capacity do we help you? Well, of course, we'll do any kind of search campaign, uh, Google and Bing, social campaigns, YouTube. Of course, these are pre-roll. We have display campaigns. Those are ads you've just simply seen anywhere online. Uh, Dynamic Auto is a little interesting. That's specific to automotive campaigns on Facebook. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. We have a webinar on that uh, that you can check out. Of course, we'll do full call tracking and recording, a HIPAA compliant, of course, for our EU friends, GDPR compliant as well. And lastly, for those in Canada, PIPEDA compliant as well. Landing page creation and hosting. So important to know, your clients don't have a great website, or maybe it's not optimized to generating leads. No problem. We'll build your landing page. We'll host it. Um, we'll make sure we track it uh, and put all the codes on there needed to be able to kind of prove, um, you know, I would say uh, prove... Uh, I don't want to keep saying attribution, but I want to be able to prove the success we're generating for you. 
Lastly, creative, of course, I have a uh, creative creation. Let's say creative production. We have a uh, graphic design team in-house here that's building ads for you on your behalf. Uh, no problem there. Lastly, the proof of performance in the form of ROI, in the form of um, our dash hound reports for local ads. Really interesting stuff there. And then lastly, the inexpensive setup and management fees. Yeah, depending on where you're going, you know, our setup fee is, our setup and management fee is, uh, I would say, quite com uh, competitive these days. Um, truth be told, though, what I've found is that competing on price is a race to the bottom. For the most part, if you have a really well-built ad offering, which I believe we do, um, for the most part, I, I don't really even bother competing on price because if I got great retention of our clients and we're growing in the rate we're growing, I know that we've kind of built something that's already working. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, is what my dad used to say. Uh, but definitely something to keep in mind that, you know, definitely competitive management fees these days and a very inexpensive setup, I would say. Types of campaigns. Google and Bing ads, search-based ads, traditional pull-based marketing. So I'm going to talk about two types of marketing, pull and push. Pull-based marketing is users in market requesting information. They're pulling information towards them, right? Shoe stores in my area. So when I see that text-based ad on the top of a Google search screen or in Bing, that user is actively in market or they have an intent to purchase or else they wouldn't be searching for it. So usually search ads being the, I would say the majority of our book um, is very much so conversion focused, very much so lead focused. It's probably one of the best venues to uh, elicit that response. The worst part is just about everyone else knows that too. So it would be what you would call a red ocean. You know, there's a lot of predators in the water there, meaning you're going to have to fight it out in a bidding war in some cases. So that's why it helps to have, you know, some of the software and the technical know-how to know where we can find some cost efficiencies for you, right? Whether that means some strange little additions to your keywords, whether that means adding like location, say uh, extensions, uh, call tracking ex extensions, more branded competitor keywords, say a lot of different ways that we can do that. And again, if you're interested in any of this stuff, Ad Expert, I believe level two does a deeper dive into each of the tactics. Of course, Google and Bing ads, uh, you know, SEO is great. Uh, SEO, uh, search engine optimization. You could think of that as your earned rank on Google, unpaid rank as it were. But SEM is basically your sure shot, quick lead generator. So for a lot of clients running SEO, listen, I don't want to wait the month or two months that's needed to get me up to that, you know, first page of Google in the organic ad or in the organic uh, search results. I want to start generating leads today. Well, no problem. We can pay to play. We can start running uh, search engine marketing or SEM ads to get you there sooner. Of course, like I alluded to Google ad extensions, something we're using heavily, something partners may not know location extensions, right? Getting you in that map listing, not always but it definitely gives us a good chance to get there. And those come standard on any campaign, no problem. Call tracking, site link extensions, uh, you know, the list goes on and on. I won't bore you with that. Um, I already guess touched on that point on Google Maps, so let's skip that for a moment. Facebook and Instagram ads, you know, we like social networks, no doubt. What I love about social networks is the time on site. People on Facebook and Instagram, Slightly female centric, I would say slight skewing uh, more so on Instagram than Facebook, of course. Um, you know, but that audience is a really well built audience. A lot of people don't know, you know, up till recently, I think the fastest growing demographic on Facebook was 55 plus. So for a lot of people, Facebook, while they didn't think it may be a good medium for you, people spend hours on it, meaning that people are going to spend a longer time on your ad, meaning that you'll get better ad saturation of that message with that user. Historically, though, Facebook and Instagram struggle sometimes with targeting uh, due to some recent, um, say, political turmoil. Let's use that term. Of course, we can use these to build brand loyalty, ambassadorship. No marketing is better than your clients or the, your, your customers, I should say, marketing for your clients. Brand ambassadors, lovely to have. When we can get that social appeal or we can get users engaging with that ad, what you'll notice is the lift or the engagement of that ad goes up dramatically. Because now it's not, you know, Vendasta advertising some product or service. It's my sweet Uncle Gary, you know, sharing a post about an ad. You know, I have a much greater chance of having that ad message resonate with me as a user. Of course, likes, comments, and shares, like we were discussing, increase what we'll call the organic trickle-down. This isn't Reaganomics. We're talking more like uh, more people liking, sharing, and commenting on an ad. You get an extra bump on that organic reach or unpaid reach. So Uncle Gary likes those posts. I'm going to see him. He's got some fire posts on his uh, feed usually. So I'm seeing that ad. That ad is free because I'm no longer being served it from Vanasta. 
it's now my uncle sharing, commenting, or engaging with that that is getting me to see that ad on his newsfeed. And then finally, we're talking about every form of pixeling. So you want to track add to carts, you want to track abandoned carts, you want to track, say, users on your site, remarket to those users, different ad creative, right? A-B split testing. Maybe you want to do a lookalike audience based on everyone who's on your site. You look for everyone else who looks like them but hasn't been to your site some smarter ways that we can build some tracking codes to make sure that these campaigns are continually evolving. Because make no mistake, no campaign in this room is ever set and forget. Always going to be some element of learning that's happening on the back end. Hopefully that learning is something that we're passing on to the client as well. Display ads get a bad rush. You know, not a lot of people like display ads, unfortunately, you know, because of the last couple of years, you know, maybe used slightly maliciously. Pop-ups, you know, gone are the days of, you know, hot singles in your area. Those ads don't exist anymore, at least on none of the networks we're buying. Display ads are, they're Advent 1994, so they're a little long in the tooth. However, display ads are the best targeted ad medium out there. So we target display ads based on, you say everything from census data, everything from your credit history, you know, Visa, MasterCard, Amex, love selling data. You know, everything from categories, contextual topics you've researched, uh, you know, TV subscriptions, uh, physical movements, right? You know, have you been to a pizzeria four times in the last month? Have you just bought a plane ticket to Bermuda, say, uh, you know, to Tahiti or something? I don't know, you know, display ads are the best targeted ads out there. However, pros and cons, they also have the worst click-through rate. When's the last time we clicked on a display ad? If you think of display, think like ads on websites, right? big boxes in the top right, leaderboards across the top of, say, your local news site or across BuzzFeed or whatever that may be, click-through rates are notoriously poor with display. But the targeting, you know, targeting is rich. You know, back in 2016, we had 5,000 data points on every individual in North America. And that was back in 2016, right? So imagine where that's at today. Of course, it's targeting these audiences, again, on those online, offline movements where you may be in one city one day, and then now I've seen that you're now in another city, and in that city, are you spending 40 hours a week in a certain location? And maybe I'm noticing that you're going to City Hall, and maybe I notice that you go to Light and Power to get your utilities hooked up. Well, based on all of those offline actions, I have a fairly good idea that you probably are a new mover to a new city or town, and that there might be some furniture ads, say, that I can serve you. Or maybe I want to start serving you ads for new, say, television services or to get your telecom hooked up. A lot of ways we can target with display for sure. Great for raising brand awareness and targeting that audience like we had discussed. Again, display, because it's been around so long, it's pretty inexpensive. I would say your display is probably going to be your cheapest kind of ad out there. Uh, but again, just simply due to the fact that you're probably only going to get uh, well, benchmarks 0.08 to 0.14%. Uh, Canada to the US. So, you know, we're talking a fraction of a percent, right? So I got to serve a couple hundred thousand of those ads to get you some good conversion. So definitely something we keep in mind. And then lastly, data collected with that display campaign can be run in a search and social campaign in the form of audience targeting. So I kind of flipped that off a little casually, but uh, for any marketer in the room that's done a lot of search and social, that's probably going to raise your eyebrow a little bit. Um, basically, our uh, that proprietary tool local ads is using the wealth of information on physical movements, uh, credit history, you know, anything I can pull on you online, every device you own. And I'm using all of that to package into a custom audience. And that audience can be shipped out to your search campaigns to serve ads to. So I can serve ads to all the Mike Vossens of the world and every device the Mike Vossens of the world own uh, based on all of the data I found through a display ad, but I can serve those ads in say search or in social, or in video, or even OTT, which would be considered over the top, or streaming service. So think, think Netflix, but not Netflix. Netflix doesn't sell ads, I wish they would, stingy. Um, but Hulu, Crackle, you know, PlayStation View, YouTube Premium, we're buying ads on these big uh, streaming services as well. New Age Cable, I would consider. Ah, YouTube ads, pre-rolls. Everyone knows a lot about those already. A little bit slightly skewered, uh, I would say, in the younger demographic. YouTube seeing a uh, pretty marked, I would say, improvement of uh, how-to videos. So for things like life coaches, for things like business counseling services, for a lot of our partners even in some cases. Uh, YouTube does a really good job uh, of being able to deliver that ad message. Because of the true view nature of YouTube as well, 
Yikes, I'm already halfway through. Yikes, I gotta rip. Because of uh, the nature of YouTube being true review, meaning that if a user skips that video before it's completed, before 15 seconds or completion, you're not charged for that impression. Free branding, in essence. You're getting ads out to users. That first five seconds protected time, if you can get your message out in that five seconds, then, and that user skips, I'm not gonna charge you a dime for that. So no problem there. Of course, keep in, uh, consider that the vast majority of people, not only on YouTube, but on just about every ad medium out there is gonna be heavier on the mobile side. Usually 60 to 80%, depending on the, uh, the demographics, have a pretty marked, I would say, impact on what devices they use. Naturally, younger audiences use mobile devices more uh, prominently. And of course, as you can see, some videos can be skipped, some can't. So we also have an option of running video ads that are not skippable. Um, I like true views better because free branding is free branding as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and, and you know, if someone wants to watch the video, that's also a good metric to be able to track how many people actually watched it through completion. Is my ad message strong enough to keep them past that five seconds, right? Interesting stuff. Dynamic auto ads, very interesting. Basically, and again, we have about a whole webinar on this, so I'll be very brief. Um, but if I were to tell an auto dealer, listen, for $1,000, I'm going to generate around 769 you know, clicks to your site to a specific vehicle detail page based on creative of a vehicle that you're selling, that exact make and model, down to the VIN number of that vehicle. So I can promise you, and again, I hate the P's and the G words, promise or guarantee, local, uh, sorry, just Dynamic Auto Ads is the only product that I can safely guarantee that we were going to generate a, what would that be? Wholesale cost per click, about a buck 30. So for a thousand bucks, I'm taking about 550 unique users. Uh, yeah, for about 720, 750 rather odd clicks uh, from about 550 unique users to that vehicle detail page. So that gray Honda four door with the sport package, VIN number, you know, X51J112. I'm taking audiences that have previously viewed that ad I'm serving them a carousel ad on Facebook with that exact vehicle I was looking at or any complimentary vehicles, that ad's built in milliseconds as that client's, or as that user's Facebook page is loading. It's pulling information from your auto dealer's website on all of the cars I looked at. And in the milliseconds my Facebook newsfeed is loading, it's gonna build that ad with links to each of those vehicle pages only on the vehicles that I was looking at on your client's site. So we can all imagine the impact of having a totally custom audience with a totally custom ad every time. The conversion goes way, way up there. Um, you know, I don't wanna beat that one to death too much. There's a full hour long webinar on that, so I'd encourage anyone to take a, take a listen to that. I would like to spend a little time on local ads. Again, I booked two hours on this one uh, in old webinars, so I will still try to kind of give us a high level. Local ads is that proprietary product. We're considering it a premium advertising product. Basically, what local ads is doing is it's taking all of the strengths of display, all of the strengths of tactics like geofencing, if you're familiar with that, basically you know, targeting specific locations on a map, saying anyone going into this zone, I wanna collect, I wanna capture and serve a message to. It's using census data, credit history, subscription, say of uh, you know, what, what viewership you maybe watch, uh, any kind of data I can pull off of, uh, you know, any profile online, social, LinkedIn, you know, Pinterest, all of that data is collected on these users. I'm collecting all of those users' devices. So I get every mic of the world, every mic V out there. I get every mic V's, tablet, smart TV, um, and desktop computer. And then I'm gonna package all of that audience, uh, you know, all of those devices with those audiences into a custom audience group that I'm then gonna ship again to maybe an Instagram campaign. I only want these users and every device they own to see this message. Or maybe on Facebook, or I bid more aggressively on them in search, maybe I run only video ads to those users. Or of course, maybe those are the only people I serve OTT or those streaming service ads to. Really, really cool, cool tech. Location and behavior, we use a pattern or a sequence of activities to determine purchase intent. So maybe you went to like, take a personal injury attorney, you get these all the time. Maybe I'm looking at high traffic uh, uh, you know, intersections in town. And then I track what users go to an ICU ward. And then I track, a little more maybe, then I track what users will go to an auto salvage yard or a physiotherapy clinic. Or maybe I track those users going to my direct, uh, say, competition. 
and I'm going to collect those users in those just physical movements alone, let alone layering on all the online activity. What to do when you've been in a wreck? What are they going to do when they're sitting in, you know, recovering, say, from that auto accident? Well, they're probably going to do a few searches. So I'm going to pull, what have they been searching for? What are they looking for? So it's not only that offline location-based, but it's also the online data-driven audience targeting that we're layering in. And that's what makes this product a little unique. Certainly, actually, a lot unique, I should say. Multiple tactics. I don't want to bore you with that. We've kind of chatted a little bit about that already. Physical movements, online activity, determining that pattern, that sequence of events that lead to a purchase. We're trying to discern that purchase intent. There's a lot of ways to do that. Live reporting. So we have a, a live report link for local ads that will kind of break down everything for you. And of course, like all things Vendasta, I need to tie that back to the ROI because that's going to be a huge feather in our cap when we go for renewal. So definitely that ROI is something we like to focus on as well. Now, we haven't touched on any of the additional services, uh, but kind of in closing, you know, at least of the technical breakdown here, of course, we're going to do all your call tracking for you. So totally, again, HIPAA compliant, don't worry about that. GDPR, PIPEDA compliant. So all the call tracking is done on our end, call recording, where applicable, of course. Um, so we'll do all of that for you in local numbers, right? I got these for North America, for Australia, for Great Britain. You know, we're looking at getting these for South Africa, you know, local numbers, of course. Landing page creation and hosting. So I'll build you a landing page, I'll code it up. We'll make sure that we have all the lead capture, say, built into there based on the client's goal. No problem. I think that's like 19 bucks a month. Like, you know, it's nothing. You sneeze at that, right? And then lastly, the creative production. So full graphic design team, uh, basically creating your first set of creative in any ad campaign. The first set's always included. Um, so we always like to have that running. We'll go through two rounds of revisions with you. No problem. What available resources do I have? Because admittedly, Vendasta has struggled, I would say, in the past offering pre-sale support. Typically, the way I define our ad offering is it is a digital advertising fulfillment service. So for the most part, our team's involved post-sale, but partners need some resources to go out and make that initial sale, especially if they're unfamiliar with ads. So we've done a complete rehaul. You know, I can't tip of the hat to everyone on the internal uh, teams here, um, you know, helping us build out more resources for partners because you guys have been asking for it. So we want to deliver. So if you you know, you have time jumping into your, say, product pages in Marketplace in Partner Center, you're going to see we've updated and improved all of the brochures, sales decks, um, FAQ sections, sample reports in a lot of ways are all updated. So they're all white labeled. You can throw your logo on this. If you got sales staff that like to just do one sheeters, you know, no problem. We heard you. We built them. So you can go in and start downloading some of these resources um, and you can start branding them up even at any level of partnership, right? You're a free partner. No worries. You're going to have the same access to this stuff as an enterprise partner does. So I would strongly encourage all of our partners to jump into that product page in marketplace, start poking around these products. You'll hear that. Um, I would say that that message a few times today. That's the number one takeaway for everyone on this webinar. Check out the product pages, tons of content in there. You know, you don't have to wait for me to get, you know, back to you on that email. You know how slow I am some days, you know, so take a peek at that. There's a pile of resources in there you'll find valuable. Sales decks, right? We built totally white labeled sales decks for all of our partners. You can edit them, adjust them, put your logos on them, add your notes to them. Uh, of course, all of this is readily available for you. Download them, take them out. It'll do half of the heavy lifting of preparing for that pitch with your clients built-in case studies, you know, any kind of talk tracks you need, those are in there. You're going to find a ton of resources in there. Again, the goal is to try to educate our local businesses. A lot of partners don't necessarily need it, but some partners, they need a little bit, I would say, better understanding of how the ads are run, how to sell them. This is the best way to do it. In my opinion, taking the sales decks, getting your feet wet, basically diving into the guts of these ad campaigns and really understanding how they work and function, that's going to make not only your campaign's more successful, but your business more successful moving forward. Because now you're a point of expertise. Hey, it's tough, to, it's tough to outsource your local marketing expert. It's tough to get that kind of support, you know, say from all, all the way over here in Canada or from, you know, overseas. They love having that local sales rep be that point of expertise. And I tell you, this is the quickest way to get there. So take a peek at these product pages for all of these documents. What's in the product page? Well, hey, I'll show you. Product pages, as you can see here, the content on here is going to be high-level overview. What is it? How to, how to order it? How to enable it, right? 
in the example I'm showing you here, in this client's product page or this partner's product page, you can see that they actually don't yet have this product eligible to be sold. So I would want to go in there and enable these products, right? Enable these bad boys so I can actually start going out and selling. Enabling it just allows you to then add it to your store and be able to actually sell it, of course, with the appropriate subscription level, basic or higher, I believe. Of course, Powell's a webinar. If you're not absolutely you know, sick of my voice by the end of today's discussion, well, good news, there's 14 hours of that. So any of you with sleep apnea, or you have trouble going to sleep, you know, by all means, throw on a few of these webinars, you will be out. Uh, I got about 14 hours of that. So I haven't listened to them. I hate the sound of my own voice, so apologies for you guys. Uh, but I am told they are valuable. I thought they have some, some real uh, application for you as well. So take a peek at some of that. A lot of the stuff we've covered today is um, kind of outlined, you know, almost at nauseam, you know, for each of these products in that webinar section on our YouTube channel and then finally in the support center. So definitely take a, take a peek at that. All right, let's get to pricing. Let's get to the meat and potatoes. I want to go out and sell, right? So I wanted to briefly mention that for some partners, it was a little bit of an adjustment because we moved from a stock or a standard 25% management fee on the monthly wholesale to a tiered management fee. So let's just clarify real quick. Wholesale is the ad spend and Vendasta's management fee rolled into one. And that's what I am charging all our partners. Our partners then turn around, add their margin onto it. As you can see on the right side here, uh, suggested retail price, you'll add your margin onto this and then sell that to the client, retail. Um, I always get partners asking, is that ad spend? Ad spend is uh, the basically the money I'll take after our margin has come out to buy the ads. So technically ad spend will be a lesser amount under these three tiers. So to get to kind of, you know, to stop kind of beating around the bush here, the three tiers that we have, minimum spend now 300 was five, uh, minimum monthly commitment also we got rid of was three months now is one month so you can run a $300 campaign for one month however the setup fee or excuse me the management fee you're going to pay is going to be uh, respective of that uh, monthly spend so if I'm charging you $300 we're gonna take a 20% management fee so that means that 20% of that 300 bucks is going to be used by our team uh, in the form of management the remainder is the ad spend if you move up to the second tier, what you're gonna notice is that your management fee is getting a little more attractive, 15%. And then finally in the third tier, tier three, 3,000 plus of monthly wholesale spend, I'll be able to give you a 10% management fee, meaning that you should be able to make a pretty nice margin on some of those larger campaigns. Your setup fee is never gonna change, that's the only other fee that you have to pay for. That's a 199 one-time charge. That's everything from creative, keyword research, campaign setup, coding called you know all that kind of stuff that back end setup uh, we need that setup fee to kind of cover some of those costs so that's the only other fee you're ever going to pay so monthly wholesale spend setup fee and then of course those things like call tracking landing pages used to be included in our setup fee nowadays those are tacked on as kind of like additional little tactics but we're talking 25 bucks a month for call tracking right uh, where do I have it in here I don't 25 bucks uh, for call tracking 19 bucks for landing pages, you know, every month, hey, you know, on a $300 campaign, that's not a lot of money. I wouldn't worry too much about it. So, as you can see here, for every additional medium, you're gonna have its own kind of pricing structure, given they're always the same. Search, social, video, you have your three tiers, you have your three management fees, you have your same setup fee, and we also have in these pricing decks our suggested MSRP to make it a little easier for our partners. So if you wanna say, hey, what's everyone charging on this? Normally, you know, I'd say 20, 15, 20% markup, pretty common, but we've actually already built in our suggested retail price for you. So feel free to take a peek at some of these decks. These are in Partner Center as well. Ah, you know, a lot of the same stuff. You can see how these ads are priced. I think I really wouldn't mind chatting a little bit about some specifics for some products. So things like local ads, you'll notice for all of these products, they're available in all English speaking countries, right? The only reason why I say all English speaking is because unfortunately I don't have a graphic designer that uh, you know can speak Dutch tragically. However, if you can do translation services, I can set ads up and run them. But for the most part, to have full ad fulfillment, making the ad copy, making the keywords, it needs to be English speaking. However, the only exceptions to that are local ads is presently only available in US and Canada. 
So just something to consider. We're piloting this out in Australia, in UK, hopefully pretty soon in uh, uh, South Africa. But until we get there and until that thing's bulletproof, we're going to say that that's just available for North America. But definitely something to consider looking into. Hey, having some proprietary tech under your belt when you go to pitch a client saying no one else has got this is going to really give you that extra edge when it comes to those client pitches. The last thing I'd touch on is as well, the only other difference in pricing, as you can see here, dynamic Facebook auto ads, I need a minimum thousand bucks a month to be able to promise that buck 30 wholesale cost per click or those 770 clicks to the vehicle detail page. So just to keep in mind, the only exceptions to that tiered management fee rule, Facebook dynamic auto and local ads. Those are kind of standalone products. So just keep that in mind. All right. These are as well products and services that we have. So call tracking can be applied to anything, right? Used to be included in a setup fee. Now that's just going to be tacked on for 25 bucks a month wholesale. And I actually suggest most partners marking that up too. Call tracking is an extremely valuable conversion, I would say point. Um, dynamic call codes, meaning that it's the client's number, unless that user on their site is from our ad. In the milliseconds that page is loading, it's going to scrub your client's number, paste our call tracking number in front of it so that only traffic from our ad campaigns is given that number to dial. And unlike Google call forwarding numbers, these numbers are not reused. Like I got like 20,000 of them and I think I've only used so far maybe 30% of that list. So I'm not reusing numbers. You're not going to get a call from a guy looking for Joe's plumbing, you know, in Tupelo, Mississippi for your client's pizzeria in Eugene, Oregon, right? Lastly, landing pages, hey, no problem. Creation, production of landing pages, important to note, quick bullet points on that one, unlisted or unindexed. So that means it's not searchable. You know, you cannot find these landing pages unless you're served an ad that links directly to them. Consider them like private pages, right? And they're not on the client's URL or domain. So they're on a white labeled domain, so it's not on the client's site. So something to consider there. However, if you want landing pages on the client's site, Talk to a couple of my buddies over on the website team, Mark or Bill or Kira, they'd definitely be able to help you with that. Lastly, additional creative. So we'll build additional sets of creative for you if needs be. A-B split testing if you want. The only thing we ask is a $50 one-time charge for every creative set. So a set would be like a big box, leaderboard, banner, basically a variety of ad sizes. Keep in mind those are static right now, but hush, hush, wink, wink, hint, hint, should be animated hopefully in the near future. Lastly, native ads. We have a full webinar on that, basically sponsored advertorial. We're going to be looking at revamping that service a bit here in the near future. So let's put a pin in that bad boy for right now. You know, we'll, we'll circle back on that in a month's time. Okay, what time do I got? Oh, yikes. All right. Uh, a bridge summary then, seeing as I'm already 10 minutes to the end of today, or uh, end of the webinar here. How do I basically set up ad campaigns? Easy. All we have to do is jump into the product page, number one. Let's do some research on it first, make sure we have a really good understanding of it. We wanna go up and activate these products. So you have to dive into your marketplace. That's located in your partner center. You're going to enable these products to be sold. Then what's gonna happen is, as your clients are, say you're getting ready to go out and pitch that campaign to that prospective client, I suggest partners actually pretending to order the campaign in the platform. What you'll see is an order form that's going to ask all the questions our team needs um, in lieu of a kickoff call, because we don't do kickoff calls. So important to keep that in mind. Once you filled out this order form, what's going to happen is that gets passed onto our end, where a campaign specialist, like our Facebook blueprint team for social campaigns, search team for search campaigns, et cetera, will take that order and start work on it. You'll also have a coordinator who could be thought of as the day-to-day -day admin of that ad account, who's going to be in direct contact with whoever the primary salesperson on that order was. So in the example here, this Google or Bing campaign, as soon as I've activated that, put it in my store and ordered, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have a coordinator assigned to it. Do I have it? Let me get behind on slides. Here we are, order form. I'm gonna have that coordinator, the salesperson rather, who's assigned to this order, is going to be the person our coordinators reach out to. Hey, you know, hey Mitchell, wanted to ask this, that, and the other thing. Hey, notice that you, you know, wanted call tracking. Can you take this GTM or tag manager code, pass it to your client to place on the site? Or, you know, hey Chantel, I see that you wanted this ad creative built. Here's the proofing link. Do you mind passing that to your client to try to have, um, uh, to basically, you know, proof that with your client, making sure that we have all the right notes on that. So just keep that in mind. 
all of that work is done on our end, but we try to keep your sales staff or that primary salesperson as that point of contact with the client. You don't want me kind of injecting myself in the relationship between you and your client. That's where you provide value. You know, I'll do all the work on the back end, hopefully give you all the insights and the reports to make you that local marketing expert. No one needs to know we exist. So once we get this order form, really straightforward. This is actually the one area, strangely enough, that I find partners struggle with the most, which is weird because to me, it's like a standard order form, right? But what I notice a lot of the time is people really don't spend the time to fill this out. But what I really like to, like to emphasize is that every single person who is going to touch that campaign from the graphic designer all the way down to, um, you know, the guy running codes to uh, track conversions, even myself prior to jumping on any kind of call with a partner, I am looking at these order forms because this is the, the beating heart, as it were, of the ad campaign and the, of the objective. So anything and everything you want our team to know, business only open on Tuesdays. Maybe you want to say business owner likes to be called Barry. Whatever that may be, I like to have those built into the order forms. And I'll always tell partners, hey, paint by numbers with these things, right? You know, if you want something considered or if you need something like, hey, I'd love it if you could upload this or you could put me on a two-week reporting schedule with this. Not typically something we do, but if it's in the order form, we're more than happy to either... Uh, accommodate that or be able to kind of open the discussion on why we may not be able to. But a lot of the times I find these things don't get filled out as best as uh, they could be. So definitely something I really want to emphasize on today's call. I don't want to spend too, too much time on here. I just want to hit the big points that people have questions about. Retail price, important to know. The only reason why I ask for that is because your reporting is always in retail. Truthfully, I'm not as concerned with what you, cho uh, what you choose to mark up the ad campaigns. I am concerned with what number goes on that report because I don't want any awkward questions of, well, hey, I gave you a thousand bucks. This report's saying you're only spending $400 for me. I want to make sure that report is always in retail. Value of a new customer conversion rate, that's for ROI. So what's a new customer worth to that auto dealer? Well, I would hope the business owner could tell us that. Uh, and if he or she says, listen, MSRP, that $33,000 on average you, last year in the U.S., meaning that I have a potential sale of $33,000 there on every one of these actions that I can generate. Next question is, well, how often will you close one of those actions? Inbound safe calls, maybe 20% of the time. Physical visits, maybe 42% of the time. And again, these are things I try to source from the business owner because I'll always talk to them. Listen, you know your business best. You know what sells cars in... Uh, Dallas, say Texas. I know what mediums, what targeting, what tactics, what optimization is going to give us the best quality audience at that perfect time in order for you to do what you do best. But what I don't know, what's your value of a customer? What are your close rates? What actions do you deem revenue generating? Those are the big questions in these order forms. Goal of the campaign, as you can see right here, as well as I write it again, just to make sure, oh, did we clip it? Yeah, right there. Just to make sure we get that answered, it, whenever you see a question written twice, you know it's important. Um, that's like, so what would make the goal of the campaign and what would make this campaign a success? That's like the end all be all for us. That's basically, that is the ultimate goal. So if it's calls, every effort on that campaign so far as optimization is going behind either increasing the quantity of calls, the value, or the, um, uh, I would say the, uh, what am I looking for? The, uh, not quantity, the quality. There we are, can't believe that took me that long. Quality uh, of those calls as well, because that's the number one goal. And you know, every campaign's got one, that's why I asked that question twice. Other than that, really straightforward stuff. What do you want us to start advertising for? Hey, my red and blue, say cars, or my men's and women's, say shoe lines, uh, but not my children's, say shoe lines. That's where you would put that in these fields. Lastly, things like what's the special promotion or discount? I get this a lot. Well, can you give me some guidance on it? Sure. You know, I can give you general guidance, but at the end of the day, I'm not making the offer and the call to action because I don't know, you know, what you want to offer, right? If someone said, Mike, sell me 20 trucks this month. Hey, no problem. I'm going to discount those trucks 50% off, whatever the, the, the sticker value is. And that business owner is probably going out of business though. I'll tell you that ad campaign is almost guaranteed going to be a resounding success. That's why you don't want your marketers making your ad messaging. That's why we should try to get the business owner to give us something to work with. That's in that ad expert level one video, which again, I strongly encourage us to watch. That said, that's kind of our high level overview on ads, kind of 
you know, and I, I, a little quick on some parts, I think it maybe dragged out a few other parts, but I think at the end of the day, we need to look at ads as that foot in the door product. We need to look at ads in the fact that, you know, by 2020, we expect 50 cents of every dollar to be in digital ads. And moreover, now we're seeing cross, uh, cross the pond competition, right? So North America, primary ad market right now, as far as buyers and sellers, uh, Asia Pacific markets are going to probably take over in the world of uh, online media expense. Uh, again, probably by 2020. So you're going to start seeing a lot more competition for our local audiences from abroad because they realize that's a lot of good, I would say, um, those are markets that they've maybe not had access to in the past. With digital ads, they can get their message to us easily, meaning that there's going to be a lot more competition in this space in the near future. So uh, for a lot of partners, it's simply about being out in front of that, offering these solutions that their clients are asking for. It's the whole reason why Vendasta has an ads team because our partners said, listen, we need ads. Uh, so thank you because that got me hired. So I appreciate that. Um, but at this point, you know, we've kind of gone over a little bit of the tactics, a little bit of the mediums. We've talked a little bit about what's needed, the ordering process, some areas you can collect resources in. Um, that said, I believe, is there anything else I want? No, I believe that's everything that we had for you for today. Um, of course, now we'll open up the floor to any questions. Uh, I'll try to be cautious of everyone's time here. And of course, if you have any questions following this meeting, whether you're a partner or not, no problem. Feel free to reach out to myself, email address, Calendly link. Admittedly, guys, I live and die on that calendar. So usually you get a quicker response by pushing me a meeting rather than an email. And of course, we have our success on demand and our sales team readily available at any time at the number on the right email address or through the link get started today. So with that said, I'd like to open up the floor to any questions. For those who might uh, be diving off, thank you again for your attendance. We'll be uploading this onto our YouTube channel and in our webinar section, uh, but I will be staying on to address any questions. And again, thank you for your time, you guys. I appreciate it a lot. So let's see what we got here as far as questions. A lot of love in the chat. Hey, Mitchell, nice to see you again. Thanks for jumping on. Uh, okay, Todd asks, are you getting close on having search ad campaign reports showing in the system or just sending monthly reports? Great question, Todd. Kind of depends on the style of search ad. We have, and here's where it gets muddy, we have technically three reporting tools, Dashhound for local ads campaigns, TapClicks, pretty well-known name in the industry for just about every managed campaign, and then finally, Ad Intel, which is our proprietary tool, our owned and operated, I would say, reporting service, that's being built out. So I would say to your question, search ad campaigns showing in the system can be done through Ad Intel, though with limited metrics because we're still building it, but that is within the platform. The tap clicks reports are uploaded as a PDF and uh, uploaded into the client's business center, technically not in the platform, as far as like a live link, but the reports are, and that's what our team's doing on your behalf every month. And then finally, lo uh, local ads dash hound reports are on a live link, and we are looking to get those into the platform, specifically into Ad Intel as well. Long, long vision, you guys, just for everyone's knowledge, Ad Intel will be the, the end goal. Everything into Ad Intel means I don't have to pay anyone else to run my reports for me. Um, but until we get there, and until Ad Intel is smart enough to handle, you know, the 200 different ad mediums that could, you know, drive. Um, results in there, you know, until it can speak, until C3PO, let's say, speaks every language, uh, we'll be using a combination of those three. But great question. Do you buy programmatic? Asks Sergio. Yes, we do. Programmatic ad inventory, just for everyone's knowledge, is uh, just a, a way of bidding on buying uh, ad inventory. Could be residual, could be uh, premium ad inventory. We do buy, buy programmatically uh, through our local ads offering, uh, specifically with display ads is programmatic. Great question. I should mark these as answered. Boom, boom, boom. John Keating asks, have you used LinkedIn PPC ad services for any of your clients and what are your thoughts on the platform? Great question, John. LinkedIn is something we're piloting out right now and we're overly cautious in the ads room. We've been piloting LinkedIn for just about eight months now. And if you listen to any of my older webinars, I'm saying, hey guys, we're gonna have LinkedIn, don't worry about it. We're still piloting it. The fact of the matter is with any kind of ad campaign, again, being more retention focused, I need our LinkedIn offering to be able to accomplish, it needs to be a one size fits most. Most businesses are going to get a positive return in that first month or else it's not worth offering because what we see in the data is that if I botch your first campaign, you're probably not coming back. 
So what I want to make sure is that that thing is basically bulletproof before I give it to clients. Thoughts on LinkedIn are effective. I'm noticing the costs are creeping up over the last four quarters. LinkedIn average CPCs have dropped or have jumped usually 30 to 40 cents almost each quarter. So it seems like it's getting a lot more expensive, um, at least in the, in the short term. Tough to say what that'll kind of be in the future, but we're watching that fairly closely and I'm still hoping to have a LinkedIn offering sometime in the new year here. As far as PPC is concerned, I, I believe their cost, uh, so pay-per-click, so CPC-based LinkedIn ads, I was speaking specifically to CPM-based, CPC uh, LinkedIn ads, uh, I think they're fairly affordable, um, but I believe the cost is a little fluid there too. I think the cost for CPC is going up a bit. Does it vary? Oh, so Marcos wants to know about Facebook dynamic, I would assume. Does it vary luxury cars to non-luxury? Doesn't matter to me, Marcos. Should be no problem. I can take just about any kind of online inventory. It's cookie-based. So I don't have to integrate with your client's uh, inventory management systems. It's a small line of code that's scraping all of the vehicles, whether those are Bentleys or whether those are, you know, something that I'd be driving, you know, uh, Geo Metros, right, 1994, lovely year for autos. Um, it'll scrape all those vehicles. Doesn't matter the make or the model. I just need the ability to have the code on the site. So some clients don't allow that due to brand. Uh, uh, and also I need the ability to only use that for auto. So I can't do that for motorcycles or RVs or homes. Only works with cars, trucks, vans, just so you're aware. Great question though. Is local ads available on the basic package, says Pamela. Yes, it is. All ads are available on the basic package or subscription. So if you're paying a basic subscription with Vindasta, recently we have allowed any basic partners to run ads with us. Anything under basic, I believe that's just the free and the starters. Um, yeah, any uh, free and the starters, I believe, you would not have access to managed ad campaigns. You do have our ad intel, that reporting tool that's kind of like a work in progress. You definitely have that, so you can at least get some of your clients' campaign reports in the system, but our team won't manage, optimize, or report on your campaigns until you're at least a basic level uh, partner or greater. Good question, though. Jerome asks, sorry, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, let's condense this. Are these services fulfilled by you guys and available to any Vendasta partner, or do we need to be on the pro plan? Similar to Pamela's question, great question, though, Jerome. Uh, fulfilled in-house, all of the ads team is in-house. Some of our team, like the local ads team, does have offices in uh, stateside, um, but all ads are run in-house. I'm not shipping these anywhere. Um, and then they are available for any partner, basic or higher. So that would be basic, pro, enterprise, and uh, I might be missing a sub-level, but I'd ask your BDR about that. Good question. Alex asked timeframes. I'm assuming that means SLA turnaround time, or it could be Let's, let's assume that for ease, ease of argument. Timeframes, uh, we ask for 10 business days turnaround time. Typically, the longest delay there is getting proofs back from clients. I would say an average campaign, as long as you're kind of Johnny on the spot, returning those ad proofs or getting uh, some clarification back to the coordinator who's managing your campaign, I would say the typical campaign can get up uh, usually anywhere from five to six business days, fairly quick. But I don't like to start ad campaigns without the right uh, tracking in place. You want your digital plumbing pieces in place before we set it live. It's kind of like if a tree falls in a forest, no one's there to hear it, doesn't make a sound. Ads are very much so the same way. If I generate sales for you, but I can't attribute those sales to our ad campaign, then why are we running an ad campaign, right? If I can't prove it, what's the point? So we always try to make sure those are set up, but good question. Sally wants to know, love the cap, Sally, love the enthusiasm, well done. Question one, is there additional charge for Vendasta to add the GTM? No. Google Analytics? No. That comes stock. No worries. That's like a little olive branch of friendship between me and you guys. I'm going to build your GTM codes. I can't place them, but good news is a lot of the times that'll lead to new website business. Can't tell you how many times partners are like, hey, take this GTM code, Mr. or Miss Business Owner, place this on your site. Oh, sorry. You know, sorry, Sally, I don't have my webmaster. And then it's like, oh, snap. It's time for me to sell you websites. That's a 12-month commitment. That's revenue for you every month. And now they're extremely tied to you because you're running their website and their ads. You know, you had, used to call them touch points, but I guess we don't like to use that anymore. We like to say, I don't know, shared messaging. Uh, I don't follow the tech speak too often, uh, but it's, uh, yeah, definitely always good to have a lot of products built in there. GTM code, Google Analytics creation, all included every campaign, no problem. Question two, can you please go over the local ads add-on for $500? Hoping to blah, blah, blah. Take a peek, Sally, at the local ads webinars in our YouTube channel and the product description page. Um, I don't want to kind of 
be, uh, you know, we're already a little over time as expected, I guess. I don't want to, uh, to flesh that out too heavily because I got about two hours of content on that. So take a peek at that. Local ads, very, very, very interesting proprietary tech. Uh, definitely nice little resource to have for sure. Dave, you're awesome. Thank you. Appreciate the love. Todd, Ad Intel, uh, what is it? Uh, Ad Intel is what it's referring to versus Tapwix. Ah, I get what you're saying. You're totally correct, Todd. Ad Intel can have your reports in the platform. Only works right now for Google and Facebook, I believe. We're trying to get that integrated with local ads as well as um, uh, display ads. Uh, but right now, it's just Facebook and, and Google. You can set those up as is. There's no charge for that. The only charge you pay is, I believe, for advanced reporting, which breaks out um, some of the metrics, I believe. But still kind of a work in progress. Our team's going to use tap clicks. We'll give you a login for it. Take a peek at some webinars on, uh, on that ads or on our ads page. Uh, and you can kind of see a little bit about that. Good question, though. Amir, got two PI attorneys. I got like eight of them. So let's talk. Uh, I didn't get too much detail. Talk about types of metrics you feel comfortable delivered to the client base. So Amir wants to know with PI attorneys specifically, what metrics do you feel are valuable for that customer client base? I'm going to speak generally on this, Amir, just so everyone gets some value out of this. Um, long and short, uh, we have some webinars on selling to different verticals. Uh, attorneys are in there. So attorneys are the top five most expensive CPCs this year stateside. Attorneys, I think, rank fourth in the top or in the most expensive CPCs on search. So you're going to pay out the nose for PIs. A lot of the times, tactics we're using, just like I alluded to when I was chatting a little earlier, tracking physical visitation, a pattern or a sequence of actions. Maybe I am in a local hospital, and then I go to a chiropractor. And then after that, I'm going to a few other law offices. That's just physical offline actions, let alone maybe I'm searching what to do when in a car accident. Maybe I'm searching for lower back pain. What am I covered for? Yeah, you know, maybe I'm reading content on, you know, Mike's PI blog, reading about how to know if you have a claim or you could make a claim based on a recent accident you had had. So it's not only that offline actions, but those online activities that we're collecting, tracking, uh, and then building that audience group. I had a PI from New Orleans actually in last week, we sat down with him, chatted heavily about how we're going to roll this out. So there's a lot of strategy, a lot of thought being put behind that. Take a peek at local ads and I would take a look at specifically the um, uh, CPA slash ECPV per vertical. We have attorneys built in there and I believe I already have a range of what you would expect cost per acquisition or effective cost per visit for attorneys in North America, low to high. So it'll say like, hey, 50 to 100 bucks is what we would expect for every new lead. And as in a phone call, an appointment booking, a physical visit to that PI already built into the system. Good question, though. You're welcome, uh, Todd. Thank you. Thank you, Amir. Let's see what we got. Sally's got a good question here. Are we charged as soon as we activate a product? You said to do so. Uh, access the workflow web uh, questionnaire. Ah, yes. So... Great question, actually. I, I believe Sally's referring to when I'm saying fake your way through ordering a product. So you finish that order form, and I didn't show it on the screen. Let's see if I can back up in here. We, we Come on. Is it going to let me? Here we go. So after this screen, you're actually going to be taken to a purchase confirmation screen. So it's going to say, hey, Sally, you agree that you want us to charge you $200 setup fee, you know, $300 monthly spend, check, check, opt in, yes, charge my card. So you can go through this entire order form. The next page is the purchase confirmation page, kind of like the checkout as it were. You don't have to go to that checkout page. The only time you're charged is if you were to check both the boxes, yes, I'm ready to be charged. Yes, I'm ready to set this live. And as far as billing is concerned, I don't know if I mentioned that. Usually we bill one to two business days after these orders are submitted or when our team picks them up. And the important note, we used to charge setup fee and then we would charge your wholesale monthly spend, usually a day before the campaign goes live. However, what we're learning is that if I charge you the setup fee and the whole monthly spend right in, say, that two-day window after you've ordered, even though the campaign won't go live for five days, now I find that partners are much quicker at getting campaigns ordered and the fields filled out and back to our team. Even though we're not running ads, we've already charged you for that month the setup fee and that month of delivery. So I find it actually helps the turnaround time on getting campaigns set up. Important to note, before it used to be just setup fee and then the monthly wholesale, usually one to two days before the campaign goes live. Now it's all happening at once. Setup fee and wholesale fee, usually one to two business days after the order is submitted. So good question there. 
All right, Alex, do you have any solutions for clients that don't know how to close the leads we send them? <laughs> that's a good question, Al. Ooh, that's a tough one, Alex. Uh, do we have any solutions for clients that don't know how to close the leads we send them? Um, I'd suggest maybe chapter 11. Uh, probably not a bad idea to start looking at uh, contingency planning. Um, no, ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, if clients can't close the leads that we're delivering to them, um, you know, I would say that that warrants maybe a larger discussion. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any sales staff to close those for you. Depending on the vertical, though, Alex, we could probably offer some good guidance. Like, oh, we, you know, at expert level one, I keep tying back to those videos. We talk about things like creating, you know, the, the ad message trinity is what I call it. That's pedigree or expertise. Why do you trust me? You know, so in the ad message, this is general sales advice, I would say. I'll offer uh, value add and urgency. How do I how do I build value into the offer I'm saying? You know, why do people care about it? And then lastly, urgency. So why do I need to do that action today? That's like the holy trinity of ad messaging. If you build those three into your ad message, it's usually fairly safe that you're going to get a good return. Great question, though. Sergio asked, do you have any information on average advertising spend per vertical so we can assess if a customer is underinvesting uh, versus competitors? Great question. I used to have a tool I used pretty heavily. SpyFu was a nice one we also used, and the snapshot report was something that we had leaned on historically. However, I don't, I find they're all like band-aid solutions. You're not getting a wealth of information, nor do I find it very accurate. So I would like run that for, you know, Ford USA, and it would say, oh, Ford USA is spending $100 on AdWords. I highly doubt, you know, Ford HQ is spending only $100. You know, it's yikes, if that's the case, uh, that's not good. Um, there are some tools that we can look at. Snapshot report is usually used to kind of assess that client's online brand. There's a little piece of advertising in there. Truth be told though, I don't think I have a great solution one way or another that's going to look at the average spend per that vertical. What I like to do a lot of the time is just search online. I hate to do a shout out to WordStream because they are my direct competitors those dirt bags. Uh, no, they're actually, I think they're a great company too. Wordstream does a great job of showcasing average benchmark click-through rates and I find they're fairly accurate. Click-through rates, cost per click data, don't have them run your campaigns. I want to run those campaigns, but they have great, great information on their site. Go to our product pages though. We also have some of those broken down already. So local ads specifically, it'll tell you how much is the rough spend to get how much return. Search, I can do search estimates to figure out, okay, how many people are searching in this market. It's tough to figure out how much their competition are spending or if they're over or under investing, that's something a lot of the times it's gonna be vertical and market specific. So you'll see in Canada, you know, one, you know, our average CPC on real estate AdWords is like four bucks. Stateside though, that's like $26. So it's totally different. So you wanna make sure you're keeping that in mind. Might be a discussion to have uh, offline as well. So, hey, I'm going to this guy, that guy, going to this client, I'd like to bring her some of, something of value. That's uh, certainly some ways we can help you strategize pre-sale. Unless there's any other questions, again, you guys, this will be uploaded in YouTube. Really appreciate everyone's uh, attendance. You know, got some of the best clients in the game as far as I'm concerned. Great questions and, and awesome engagement. Uh, but with that said, I will let you get, uh, get all about with your busy days. Looks like no more questions in the, old, uh, in the old chat here. Thank you again, everyone, for your time. I'll make sure that this can, uh, report is, or, geez, stuck in ads mentality here. This webinar is uploaded here shortly, should be up and running by about tomorrow, I would imagine, in YouTube. And of course, reach out to myself or the team if you have any questions. With that, I will wish you all a great day. Thank you, Alex, for your attendance. Um, I will wish you all a very, very great day. Thanks again, you guys. Uh, and hopefully we'll be chatting in the near future. But I'll talk to you later. See you guys.